How do we translate volatility over time? Let's say scale a one day volatility up to a 10 day volatility or scale an annual volatility down to a 10 day volatility. Okay, so let's look at scaling volatility from one period to another period. On the left panel, I'm going to scale a one-day volatility up to 10 days. And on the right here, we're going to scale an annual volatility down to 10 days. And so scaling is a common function, and it's helpful because it reminds us that it's important to clarify the assumption around our volatility. If we have a volatility of 1% or 20%, the user of that really needs to specify, is that a daily volatility, a monthly volatility, or an annual volatility? The number by itself needs to be associated by the period with the period. To scale the volatility, we're going to use the square root rule, which is very popular and somewhat intuitive because if we look here at the variance, variance is always denoted sigma squared. The variance is a linear function of time. That's intuitive, except that we don't usually use the variance. We usually use the volatility or a standard deviation, which is its square root. That means that volatility itself scales in proportion to the square root of time. So let's apply that rule now to some simple assumptions. My inputs are always in yellow. Asset value of $100, and I'm assuming a daily volatility of 1%. That's what the one day mean here means here. It's a volatility period. My small t, where I'm starting, is 1. So my 1% is a daily volatility. And then I have here a horizon target. That's a I'm using a capital T for that. So I'm saying I would like to scale my daily volatility of 1% to a 10-day volatility. And so to do that, I'm just going to apply the square root rule. I take the 1% daily volatility and multiply by the square root of the ratio of periods. And I want to put in the numerator the horizon to which I'm scaling, in this case 10 days, and in the denominator is the one day that matches my volatility input of 1% or where I'm starting. So you can see here I'm applying the square root rule, scaling to capital T, and I'm starting at small t. My 1% daily volatility scales to a 10-day volatility of 3.16%. Now, here's the important assumption that is too often neglected because this is done very, this scaling is done very often, but the key assumption behind it is not normality. The key assumption behind it is IID, or independent and identically distributed returns. When we do this, this, that's what we're assuming. That means that if the returns are not independent and identically distributed, for example, if the returns cluster or are auto-correlated, that's a violation of IID, and our scaling is going to be biased under or overstated depending. Okay, but if they are IID, then I just wanted to show we could multiply one more time by and convert the volatility into a value at risk or VAR, which I covered in the last video, the concept of VAR. And here you can see how simple it is now. We really scale the volatility again just by the deviate based on our confidence. So if we want a 95% confident VAR, that's associated with a normal deviate. I'm using the norm S inv here because that's an inverse cumulative normal distribution function. The normal deviate associated with 95% confidence is 1.645, and that just multiplies by the volatility. So here, the 10-day volatility, 3.16, scales itself to 5.2%, and then this represents the 10-day value at risk. In other words, our worst expected loss with 95% confidence over the 10-day period is 5.2%, or in dollar terms, $5.20. That was scaling up. Scaling down applies the same square root rule. 
This time I have the same asset value assumption. The only difference is I'm assuming now that we're starting with a 20% per annum volatility. See, that's why I have the 250 days. Small t, that's where we're starting. That's our input assumption. So we would say that's an annual volatility of 20%, or we could say 20% per annum. And this time we want to scale down to a 10-day volatility. But we apply the same um, square root rule, and it'll work for us if we're just mindful of we multiply by the square root. If we're just mindful of the fact that in the, numer in the numerator, it's the period to which we're scaling. That's, in this case, 10 days. In the denominator, it's the period that matches our input volatility, in this case, 20%. So this ratio in the square root is now less than 1. And this scaling is a clean uh, 4% because uh, our ratio there was really, uh, our square root ended up, ended up giving us a round number. So the 20% scale, the annual 20% volatility scales down to a 10-day volatility of 4%. And again, I can multiply that by 1.645 if I would like the 10-day value at risk. So in this case, the worst expected loss over 10 days is... $6.58 with 95% confidence. Of course, if we want more confidence, then the uh, that VAR is going to increase as represented by a loss. So that's the square root rule. Just to be very complete about this, I just want to attach one more idea because these value at risks that I've been showing that multiply by the scaled volatility we would technically call those relative value at risk because you might have noticed we're not including any expected return for this asset. If this is an equity, we have positive expected return or drift. And the drift doesn't scale with the square root, so we actually would need to break that out separately. But I just wanted to show you that we've been, we can do all this scaling as, as multiples with the value at risk if it's a relative value at risk, but if, if this asset has an expected return of 10% per year, for example, then my absolute value at risk would actually take that 10% and multiply it by the ratio of 10 divided by 250. So that's the 10% proportionally scaled to a 10-day return. And I put a negative in it because it's a gain, and so it's going to offset the loss. And my absolute 10-day VAR then is a little bit less, you can see here, than the 9%. And that's as we would expect it, because this was the loss, assuming there's no positive return or no upward drift on the asset. If the asset is expected to drift upward, then our absolute loss is going to be slightly less. However, we can't put that, we have to break that out on its own term because we wouldn't apply the square root rule to the drift or expected return, which is a simple linear proportional multiple. Okay, thank you.